Um, I just want to give a quick shout out to our marketing individuals who are here, which is Angie Moore in the back, Holly Ratliff in the green, and then Teresa over here in the left. Um, those ladies have done a ton, a ton, a ton of work over the last nine to ten months to really promote this Revital program. And I am just super thankful to have been able to kind of um, be a part of this. And, and also, you know, grateful to Matt. He's the clinic director here. And um, a lot of credit goes to him for how this clinic is run and, and the success that we've had in terms of just really being able to help people. And the other thing for me is he's right. This is the only job I've had since I graduated. So I don't have anything to compare it to, but I'll, I'll, I'll certainly say um, I can't imagine there being anybody more supportive of us as therapists to help us grow um, and that sort of thing. So today we're going to talk specifically about the cancer rehabilitation program um, that CORE has launched over the last nine to ten months. This presentation was created uh, originally by Audrey Stockwell. She is one of our physical therapists in the Louisville market. She does a great job. Um, so we kind of just didn't want to reinvent the wheel, so we just kind of pulled this presentation from her. So. Um, it's, it's great for me to be here because if anybody really kind of knows the story of how I ended up here at this clinic in Nicholasville, it's, it's one of those things where I, for me, I know that I'm here because the Lord wanted me to be here and I'm here still because it was all part of, of the plan for me to be here. And about, was it September, I believe, Catherine um, had some situations come up where it made sense for her to transfer to our Chevy Chase location, which is closer to her, her family. And so when she left, um, that left a void for the cancer rehab program here at our clinic. So because I've had the opportunity to really develop a lot of relationships in the community, I actually now live here in Nicholasville. It really, for me, made sense to, to be a part of this program because I have come to know and understand how important relationships are in terms of helping people get better um, and really just making sure everyone is aware um, of what we can do to, to help you guys physical therapy wise. So, we're going to go throughout the presentation. If you guys have questions and you want it, it's pertaining to what's on the slide, feel free to, to raise your hand, stop me. Um, we'll have question, time for questions at the end as well, but I want this to be um, as relaxed as we can be. So when we talk about cancer rehabilitation, what we talk about is, is this term, the new normal. And for, for me, it's been interesting learning a lot about this in interacting with patients who have had cancer, who are recovering from because really life changes the moment that you receive that diagnosis. And so kind of that, that development of the new normal is, is what we focused on. And I was telling Mr. Uh, Collier here a minute ago that our conversations have really shifted over the last number of years. Um, 10, 15 years ago, when we received a cancer diagnosis, people were just, what do we need to do to help this person survive? But over the last five, 10 years, like our conversations have changed to how can we help individuals live their best life after their diagnosis, during their, their treatment and that sort of thing. So for me, it's, it's a change in conversation. Um, research actually shows that across the US there are 15 and a half million cancer survivors. It's a lot of people. And that's a population of people that we haven't really been able to target. Um, and that's something that we are really trying to, to focus on here in this area now. Catherine, who introduced, her, introduced herself earlier, she was really um, a vital part of getting this program off the ground. She spent time at the University of Florida um, working in rehab where they had a cancer rehab team, six therapists. The moment those patients are diagnosed with cancer, they start on a prehab program. It was just, that was their normal. So for us here at court and through this Revital program, that's what we are trying to make a reality for patients across Central Kentucky. Um, because you guys, patients are surviving, but now how can we help them have the, the highest quality of life possible as they move throughout their years after their diagnosis? And then, of course, you can't see the slide all the way, but it says my control. And, and so, that's one of the things that I've gathered from talking to people who've been diagnosed with cancer because you're hit with a ton of bricks and you all of a sudden feel like you have no control over what's happening with your body, what your treatments are gonna be, those kinds of things. Um, so what we wanna really do and, and be able to talk to about is what, what patients really truly can control um, as far as their physical health goes and that's the conversation that we wanna, wanna start to have with people um, because the things that you can control as far as 
seeking a physical therapist who can help you develop a plan, choosing what oncologist you are gonna, gonna see, those types of things. So, um, so really helping the patient to focus on the things that they can control is, is what we wanna try to, try to do here with this program. Um, so this stat is pretty astounding. Less than 5% of all cancer patients have access to comprehensive cancer rehabilitation services. And the key word here for me is comprehensive. Because a lot of people, you get the diagnosis, you get the treatments, you go through the chemo, you go through the radiation, you have the surgery. But what are those other components that you may not be getting? Physical therapy, occupational therapy, speech therapy, massage, um, mental health. Because that's the whole picture, truly. Physically, we think about what cancer does to the body, but then we have to think about how does that affect you mentally, emotionally, um, spiritually, and, and how are those other needs being met so that you can function at your optimum um, ability or at your optimum level with your, your functional ability. So the next slide here is just a, a picture of, of a doctor and a patient. And you know, I, I think it's, it's hard because the healthcare system in general is flooded. You guys know that. You call a specialist, you have to wait two or three weeks to get in for an appointment. It's difficult, you know, and, and to fault oncologists is not fair. To fault physical therapists, we're just trying to change the conversation. You know, when oncologists see patients, and any of, you guys, any of you guys in here who have experienced or are going through cancer, you know when you see your oncologist, you don't see them very often, and there's a, a list of all kinds of things that, that need to be covered, so sometimes that physical therapy component just doesn't get talked about, because the oncologists, they are there to, to save lives, ultimately. Um, but we as physical therapists want to be here to help you guys help these patients get their lives back after that diagnosis and after going through that treatment. Um, so really the shift in, in helping everyone be aware that this is an option is, is what's most important for us. Um, and then I thought this was interesting. The number one stressor for the cancer patient according to research is disability which ultimately what's that, tra that translates to is okay I have this cancer diagnosis I know what steps I need to take. I've got to have chemo, I've got to have radiation, I've got to have surgery, I've got to go to all these appointments. But what does that mean for my life? What does that mean for my daily function? Am I going to be able to still get out of bed and brush my teeth in the morning? Am I going to be able to get in the floor and play with my, my child or my, my grandson or my granddaughter? Um, am I going to still be able to work? My family depends on my income in order to survive. Like These are the things that really are ultimate stressors for patients once they're they're um, diagnosed with cancer. So these conversations are, are, are what we want to have with people um, the moment that they get diagnosed with that cancer because helping patients kind of break that down, come up with a plan, figure out goals, um, those are the kinds of things that are going to help ease that stress uh, of that disability that they are going to encounter. Um, I'm going to show you guys a little bit more research that they've found. Um, it's a lot of words on the screen, but ultimately this one is just a reiteration that the most common stressor is that disability. And then this one is uh, Medicare patients, men and women over 45, that the physiological, or excuse me, the psychological distress relates much more strongly to the level of disability than it does to the cancer diagnosis itself, which that's a fancy way of saying People are worried about how they're going to maintain their livelihood, how they're going to take care of their family, how they're going to take care of themselves. Um, those are the things that, that cause, cause the most stress. And so that's one of the ways that physical therapy can be helpful by really treating the whole person. Um, there was another study. It gives some, some information on here, but the, the most important thing for you guys to, to see here is the conclusion is that more than 88% of patients needed rehab, but fewer than 21% received this care. And I think that's where you guys as community members come in for me as a physical therapist. That's why I joined this program. The relationships that I have, the relationships that I've made, I want to, to be able to talk to people about physical therapy and how it can be helpful. Um, you know, interestingly, I'll share a quick story. I was in the clinic one day. There was a patient here, member of this community for years, spoke to me about an individual in the community that was diagnosed with cancer. And I'm like, oh, I know that person. I know their parents. I know their siblings. I know where they work. I'm not kidding. I left that day and went to, to Kroger on my lunch. 
I ran into that individual's mother at Kroger. And I talked to her about it. I talked to her about the program. I told her, I said, hey, I heard about this. I'm really sorry. I'm praying for you guys. I know that's stressful. Take time to process, but dot, dot, dot. When you're ready, here's how we can help. We're available. Have them come and talk to us. Give us a call. So again, it's, it's, that's why we're here today. And I'm, that's why I'm so grateful for all of you guys that are here because it's not, for me, it's not just what we're sharing this information that we're sharing today. It's how you guys can share this information with other people in the community once you guys leave here because those, that's the way that we're going to ultimately get people the help that they need um, in order to function at their highest level, both at diagnosis during treatment and post-treatment as well. And then um, it says this is previously held beliefs that cancer survivors should take it easy and rest, but Evidence shows that exercise can not only improve quality of life following treatment, but it can limit functional decline, which is so important because this diagnosis doesn't have to be a sentence of, I'm never going to be able to do X, Y, and Z again. Um, we want to change that conversation and talk about how we can, can come up with a plan to help you, the, these patients function um, in the way that they want to be able to. Um, <clears throat> Defining the new norm for a patient with cancer, this kind of goes back to what I talked about with Catherine and her time in Florida, but ideally, this is the way it goes. You get a, a cancer diagnosis, you immediately begin prehab, which just consists of an evaluation and a, a session with a physical therapist, occupational therapist, to take a look at what your deficits are, what your, what's your cancer treatment plan, what side effects can you expect, how can you expect your body to feel, what things are you going to experience physically, mentally, emotionally after these diagnoses? And the nice thing is, court has really put a lot into this program because my, Catherine, myself, and we have therapists all across the region, uh, uh, this region, Louisville Market, all across the state of Kentucky who have attended continuing education courses to really be educated about cancer and the treatments that patients have, the side effects, the medications they're on, what does that mean for them, what deficits are they going to struggle with. So that's the, the nice thing about this is that we are educated in a way that's going to help us understand what these patients um, are going through treatment wise. Acute care, cancer care, which that, actually I'm going to go to the next slide, I think it breaks it down better. Acute cancer care, so cancer diagnosis, prehab, maybe you have to have a surgery. Then you, you need rehab after you have a surgery. Maybe you have to have chemo and or radiation. Sometimes one, sometimes both. Then you go through that treatment phase with your rehabilitation and then survivorship. And that's what we talk about, survivorship and, and wellness phase, rehabilitation, which is when you are, are functioning well and you've returned to, to a, a, a pretty close to baseline status and you're just out, you're exercising in the gym, those kinds of things. So this, is, is this continuum of care is what our goal is at, at court physical therapy with this program, is that all our patients have access to this rehab throughout the continuum of their, their cancer diagnosis and process. All of these are just different um, cancer diagnoses that um, affect people um, and that how therapy can make a difference. So these are just some of the deficits that individuals can experience um, both during and after treatment. Um, a lot of things that physical therapy can treat. Um, one of the things that we have um, that's really cool that I like a lot is a cancer functional screening tool. Because sometimes all this stuff just gets complicated and you're like, how do I know if this is right for me? How do I know if this can help me? This cancer functional screen that, that we developed, it breaks it down into yes or no questions. You go through and it asks you about these deficits. All you do is mark a yes or a no. If you have yeses on those sheets, call us, call me, call Catherine if you're in the Lexington area, but call me, we will get you guys in here, anybody in here, for a complimentary consultation to talk about what needs they have and how we can meet their needs. And if you read it, go for it, let's, let's do it, get some, get some rehab started. Um, so these are just some of the deficits that we can treat, weakness, um, fatigue, we'll go into a little bit more um, about this, still more here, um, peripheral neuropathy, decreased range of motion, radiation fibrosis is a big one that women uh, struggle with when they've been diagnosed with breast cancer and they've had ra um, radiation. Um, difficulty returning to pre-morbid activities, that's just a fancy way of saying it's hard to get back to what you were doing before. Um, and that's another area that we really want to 
to target for, for you guys. Cancer-related fatigue is by far one of the top um, struggles that patients have after um, being diagnosed and then going through the treatment with chemo and radiation. Um, and it can be really difficult to manage that fatigue because that fatigue can feel like a lot of different things. Now, I'm not speaking from experience, but simply speaking from individuals that I've talked to, like trouble literally getting out, out of bed, um, that heaviness, um, that depression, the, the, the mental struggle that you guys have. But cancer-related fatigue is such a um, big issue for these patients. Insomnia, they have generalized weakness. They can't complete their daily tasks like what we talked about because of that fatigue. Um, but the fantastic news is that physical therapy can help a ton with cancer-related fatigue. Um, 30 minutes, five times a day of moderate intensity exercise will make a difference for these patients. Um, and again, it's just one of those things where it can be a little daunting to figure out how do I go about doing that on your own. And that, again, is where we want to come in and be a support for these patients and to say, here's what we know. I may not, and, and for me personally, I may not be experiencing it, but I know that research shows that this will help you. Stick with me. Let's come up with a plan. Let's figure out how we can make this work for you. Strengthening exercises, endurance, um, fatigue journal, keeping track of when you feel better, when you feel worse. Um, all of those things are really going to help these patients um, come up with a good plan so that they can overcome that fatigue. And we talked at a, a support group yesterday with a, uh, several women post-cancer about one of them asked, like, is this just how it's going to be forever? The reality is research is showing now it doesn't have to be you can get back to maybe not running a marathon. Maybe. We did have one lady who said that. Of some friends of hers were able to do that. But if we approach this and, you got, and these patients get the help that they need, they can overcome this cancer-related fatigue and get back to a level of functioning that allows them to do what they want to do in their life. Chemo-induced peripheral neuropathy, which that just essentially means that those, those nerves um, are damaged, um, specifically chemo. Um, but it can be completely debilitating in the fingers, in the feet. You can't walk. You're falling. You lose uh, sensation in your fingertips. You can no longer um, button your shirt anymore, and you got to wear shirts like Johnny's got on. <laughs> but this occurs commonly, 30 to 40 percent of patients. And again, we can help with this. Burning, tingling, numbness, sensitivity to temperature and pressure. It puts you at risk for all kinds of things balance, tripping and stumbling. And anybody who has fallen in here knows how scary that is. And if you fall once, you're afraid you're going to fall again. But we can work to, to kind of decrease the, uh, the amount of tingling, burning, numbness, that kind of thing that these patients are experiencing. Um, again, therapy can, extress, can address um, balance, hand dexterity, which is just those fine motor tasks like brushing your teeth, buttoning, um, those kinds of things. Exercises for your strength and for your balance. Um, exercising, targeting all of the systems, visual, somatosensory, and vestibular, all of those combine to, to kind of equate to the balance that we have. Another big one is radiation, um, which this slide is, is interesting because it, which button do I push? Well, usually we just punch them both. And it's hard, but that's true. It's detect cancer and cause cancer. But radiation, man, it's hard on the body. It's designed and it does what it's designed to do, but it's hard because it affects the good cells too. You're depleted, you're exhausted. You complain to your physical therapist because you're tired. But it's true. And uh, general side effects. These are, I mean, there's a whole laundry list of them. Um, we don't need to go through them, but, you know, it, it, it really affects... And, and radiation lasts, do you mind me asking, how many treatments did you have, Tammy? 25. 25 radiation treatments over the course of five weeks. So that's every single day, Monday through Friday. You're going. You, your body is just hit, being hit with a lot. So having a plan to combat that is so critically important for our patients. Radiation fibrosis, that's when the tissue um, essentially starts to kind of harden. You lose that elasticity tightness, loss of range of motion. Um, we'll show a couple pictures here. Again, what that causes is the skin draws up. We lose range of motion. We've got pain. We've got irritation. 
all of those things are gonna limit. You know, if I've got, if I've had radiation to my neck and it's tight, like how am I gonna turn to check my mirrors when I drive? If I've got tightness because of radiation fibrosis after I've had radiation following breast cancer, how am I going to reach my arm up into the cabinet to get what I need to get for myself or my child? Again, physical therapy can help radiation fibrosis. We, we have treatments that can help improve that uh, skin uh, pliability, flexibility. Lymphedema is another thing, which lymphedema is, is drastic swelling um, after you've had lymph nodes removed. Catherine in Chevy Chase is one of our only lymphedema certified therapists in this region, but she is great at what she does. And that's one of those things where if we catch it early and you get the treatment, it can be taken care of, it can be managed, it can be helped significantly. So that's another thing that people need to know what to look for, what are the signs, how can we help, um, that sort of thing. Surgery is another thing. Um, anytime you have a surgery, surgery is surgery. It's just hard on your body. Um, things are changing, tissues are changing, you lose strength, you lose range of motion. Again, all things that physical therapy can be really helpful um, with after, after, the, after the fact. And again, this is just another area where we've done a lot of education for our therapists so that we know kind of what to look for, what the limitations are, what the restrictions are, et cetera. Again, this goes about common issues after surgery, scarring, weakness, nerve damage, the lymphedema can happen as well. So again, just all things to look for. I'm just gonna skip that slide there. Prehab, this is what we talked about. It's a pre-op evaluation and education. It's so critically important. And it's not just important in the cancer world, it's, it's important in the orthopedic world as well. I mean, I had a patient, this has been a number of years ago, but she came in after a knee replacement surgery and she told me, she said, yeah, my doctor said this wasn't gonna be much more than a scope. And I thought, that's problematic because that set that patient up for failure with their rehab process because they didn't have proper expectations of how their pain was gonna be, how their range of motion was gonna be, how their swelling was gonna be. She thought it was gonna be a walk in the park. So that sometimes, as physical therapists, that's tough because they come in here and they're like, ah, I thought this was gonna be easy. I, I, I didn't think this was gonna be a big deal. Now we're kind of trying to play catch up to educate these patients after the fact. Same is true for patients with cancer um, diagnoses. If we can help educate these people on here's what to expect, here are the options, um, here are the impairments you're gonna be dealing with after the treatment, that is gonna be something that I think and I truly believe can be life-changing for these patients. Um, education is just so critical. Um, so we, this is just a list of, of the um, things that we offer through um, court physical therapy just at all of our various clinics. Um, and it's, it's great that we are now able to put that revital cancer rehabilitation on that list. Um, it's something that is new to this area, it's new to this region, it's new to this market, but I believe strongly that it can be um, a life-changing thing. Um, the other thing, just logistics-wise, unless individuals have a federally funded insurance, like a Medicare or a military funded insurance, oftentimes they can come to physical therapy without a referral from a physician. Now, ideally, we wanna be in communication with the, the physicians, but if you're not feeling well, if, if you've got fatigue and you've got pain, call us. We will call your insurance, we'll figure out your benefits, we'll get that information to you. We have a great relationship here in, in Nicholasville with a lot of the providers in Wilmore, at Jessamine Medical, um, even a lot of the docs in the Lexington area. That communication component of it is easy, so encourage people. You don't have to wait on your physician, or if they don't wanna come in without communicating with their physician, call them, say, here's what I heard, here's what someone told me, what do you think? Because across the board, and I know our marketing people can attest to this, you, there's no pushback from physicians, they're supportive of it. Oftentimes for them, it's they're, they're just like, I don't have time to get to that part of the conversation. We've gotta cover so much else in their visits, like we just don't have time to talk about it. So again, this is why I'm so grateful for, that all of you guys are here and you guys can spread this information to others. Um, because once we get patients in the door, I'm confident that we are gonna be able to come up with a plan that works um, to help them feel better. This is what I talked about already. How do you know if cancer rehab is right for you? Um, the, the functional screen we have copies of here today. And 
every bag has a copy of the functional screen in it as well. So I please, if you guys take nothing else with you from today, please take some copies of that because that is hands down for me the easiest way to simplify this so that people can say, how do I know if this is helpful for me? How do I know if this is right? All of these are just easy, simple yes or no questions that we can answer. So again, this contact information is up here. Um, if, you, if you guys encounter anybody, if you guys have questions, please don't hesitate to reach out and ask. Um, the, biggest, the biggest thing is just people just don't know. Um, and we just want to start having these conversations. Um, Catherine and I have talked, have talked with uh, Teresa and Holly and Angie. I mean, these, this type of thing can really be, um, I think it can really be life changing. Um, and in that respect, you know, we've got a couple individuals here and I've spoke with them already that I have worked with over the last several months. Um, Mr. Johnny Collier um, has a, a tremendous story. We were diagnosed with cancer, um, thought it was just hip pain that kept coming back wouldn't go away, finally after a number of years, had an x-ray on the hip, it was a tumor in that hip, had to go through a massive surgery. The surgery didn't go well, ended up being in the hospital in that Vanderbilt for how many days, Johnny? Six weeks. Six weeks. Wakes up, his life is totally different, totally changed. You think you're going in for a surgery to remove this, wakes up and his wife's like, by the way, it's August. What? I mean, talk about life changing. And, you know, when he came into our office in uh, October, wheelchair, couldn't stand up, couldn't lift that right leg at all, um, couldn't function. And now, you know, he comes in here today on a cane shaking his head at me. So <laughs> he is a, is a testimony as far as, as um, recovery and how, how physical therapy can help. And then Miss Tammy over here, another just crazy story diagnosed with breast cancer, um, told that, oh, this is good, we caught it early, it's small, we can just do a simple procedure, take the lymph node out. Gets a call later, actually, we were wrong, we have to do chemotherapy. And then, turns out, she had another nerve issue, so they had to do a chemotherapy that was a lot, a lot harder on the body. Tammy, I miss, she'll, she'll correct me if I miss any of the details, but ultimately, gets the chemo, knocks her flat. She ends up in the hospital, can't breathe. Lungs are completely full of pneumonia. Ultimately gets diagnosed with ARDS, which is acute respiratory distress syndrome. Ends up in what's called a roto bed, which is where you are completely unconscious in the bed and the bed rotates every number of hours so that you don't get bed sores, so that it shifts your position. You were at UK? Okay, Central Baptist. Central Baptist, Baptist Health, sorry. Um, she went back after she recovered. Lots of prayer, lots of time. The pneumonia cleared up in three days. The doctor thought it was going to take a month at least. She went back after um, being sent home, and she ended up here in our clinic. She helped her husband and some friends paint an entire room in her nursery business that she owns. She took a spinning class for 40 minutes on Saturday a couple of weeks ago. Again, it's just tremendous the where she's at now compared to where she was. She went back to the hospital uh, weeks after, and the nurses there said, how many people? Two? Second person. Second person who's ever made it out of that bed once they've gotten in it. So again, you know, for me, a, a lot of this, and Tammy and I have talked about this, Johnny and I have talked about this, it's by the grace of the Lord that they are here, but for me to have an opportunity to step in and to just help facilitate them getting back to the life that they lived before their diagnosis has been a tremendous blessing for me, um, just as much as, as I hope it has been for them. Um, we have just two quick minutes. Johnny, if you want to say anything about your experience, that'd be great. If you don't, that's totally fine, too. <clears throat> Um, when I did come here uh, back in last September, I think it was, I did come in in a wheelchair, couldn't stand up. I thought this is my 25th or 6th week of physical therapy, and I probably will be doing this for most of the rest of my life. <laughs> um, 
when when I had my surgery, I was totally asleep for six weeks at Vanderbilt, and then I spent two weeks at UK Markey Cancer Center and two weeks at Cardinal Hill. And um, when I came here, I, I started out. Matt Lee was the first uh, therapist I had, and then he uh, he was out of town, so he gave me to Matt Bitch. And uh, Matt got tired of fooling with me. <laughs> <laughs> he said, I'm going to give you to the specialist. So I, I got Dr. Katie, who has done, I think, a, a great job. All three of them did. But Katie has uh, the training and the experience in the cancer rehab. And uh, I don't know whether I'll ever be able to walk normally again, but at least I'm on a cane. I still have my, my uh, walker because I can walk three times faster with right <laughs> him. But uh, they, they do do a great job here. And uh, uh, everybody here is as friendly as they can be. Heather, every time I come in, she yells at me, Brian. It's just, you know, the people are just like family. So if you have anybody that uh, does need the therapy, I, I would recommend right here. And I've been through 26 weeks of it with not only them, but with Cardinal Hill and Baptist Home Health Care. Baptist Home Health was really good also, but when I got here, the things have changed considerably. So anybody, any family members or friends, send them here. And they didn't pay me for this. So. <laughs> Thank you, Johnny. And then real quick, I just asked Tammy to say just a couple things about her you know, journey or her experience with, with PT, and then we'll wrap up with that. Well, my story is um, incredibly long, so I won't, I won't start from the beginning, but like she said, it started with breast cancer and went into what they call um, pneumocystosis pneumonia, and um, I was given a 20-50% survival chance when I entered the hospital, and when I came out, um, I, I had little use of any of my limbs, but when I I started here at Katie. I, I, I did come in on it with a cane, and you can see today I don't need anything like that. And I've only been here eight weeks, and I think she's quite ready to get rid of me. <laughs> um, but I am, I'm doing very well, and I, I give it all to court and to Katie. And um, I, I had a, an appointment last week with my pulmonologist, and she said, you know, you would not have made it through this if it wasn't for the incredible great strength shape that you were already in. And I, you know, I, I credit that, but I also credit the Lord for being there and pulling me through it too. I know I didn't do it on my own, being unconscious for six days. I just don't have that kind of will, I'm, I'm sure. Um, but, um, you know, coming in here on a cane and having limbs that were literally just being around, um, you know, I have to credit that to Katie in court. And I've been here, this is my fourth time. So I can attest that they are wonderful. And I, I did go through radiation the whole time I was here, and any aches and pains and complaints I had, I was able to, to say, Katie, this hurts and that hurts, and she said, okay, we're doing this today, and, and we got through it. And I, I, could, I don't think I could have gotten through it without her, and so I'll definitely tell anybody and everyone that I can that it sure made my journey easier, and um, you know, I think that I've gotten through my rehab with my weakness um, much quicker know being here with physical therapy and I, I, I think that I'm a true testimony of physical therapy work so thank you Tammy so again just thank you guys all for for coming it was an honor to be able to kind of share all this information with you guys um, I want you guys to know that I am available you know questions concerns send people our way um, we want to help people and um, you know I, I may not have all the right answers always but I know that that one thing is that I will always care about these patients that walk in the door and you know if I don't have an answer I'll do everything I can to get that answer. It's nice to have Catherine and uh, Chevy Chase close by in case I need it. Um, but it really is a team effort and it, it takes that whole team effort. So again I appreciate you guys being here and does anybody have any any questions before we kind of finish up? Did you fill out your cancer functional screen? Thanks, Johnny. <laughs> Once again, thanks for, uh, yes, Hazel. I was just going to say that it seems to me, too, what you do is empower the individuals to give them a sense of hope and, and challenge, which is really kind of bring them to that side of things, which I think is a real gift. 
Yeah, well, I appreciate that. And, you know, it's one of those things where it's it's just part of what we do at our clinic and, and our company. But, you know, it's funny. I talked to Matt Fitch, who's relatively new in this therapist he just graduated in August of last year and we had conversations he's like man I go to bed at night and I think about these patients and I think about them not getting better and what am I doing wrong and what else could I be doing and, and we just had a conversation because I said I remember being that way too but you know anymore for me it's a matter of you know relinquishing the control that I don't have and helping my patients believe in themselves and to know that that they can accomplish the goals that they ha have set for them and you know, again, just like that diagnosis, we don't have that control over it. But again, instilling that um, that sense of, like you said, that sense of hope is, is incredibly important um, to me and um, just as our, our, our clinic as a whole, for sure. So anybody else? All right, well, we'll be kind of hanging around. We'll be tearing stuff down, so. Thank you all for coming.